Hi, my name is Maria and welcome to my channel MH Books. And it's been a whole long time since I filmed. Um, it's been a whole load of pandemic in between. And it looks like a whole lot more to go. But today I'm keeping it fairly simple and I'm just doing a simple, what would be Friday reads if this had been Friday. It's a casual chat. Sunday's a good day in that it's considered sort of the end of the week and sort of the beginning of the week. So it's a good day to actually, when you think about it, to reflect on what you read and to maybe reflect on what you might want to read in the future. Um, this year, I finished my first book this week. It has not been, it's not been easy doing lockdown three at the moment. And it's, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty tough. So it's been hard to concentrate. I've had a whole load of books going at the same time, but not been able to read more than about one or two chapters a day until this week. So that probably is what prompted me to film this because I actually managed to film, but to film, to read a book and actually get quite near to the end of a book that is actually quite long when you think about it. Um, so the first book I read, I forgot, see I'm so unused to filming and I'm used to filming from this setup because we have new shelves. Um, <laughs> we need more new shelves because this book's now piled everywhere. Um, but it was quite a long book to be honest. The book that I finished was Insomnia. Um, so it's the first book I finished this year, or like probably about eight books on the go at the moment. Um, and I do actually have my little notes like this, so I do remember what the book is about because I swear I just have, we, we are not allowed out brain and I can't, don't talk to people brain and to keep anything in my head for more than two seconds has now become quite complicated. Um, so this book, it was a reread and it's also upside down. Um, and it's... <laughs> It wasn't upside down. I am so unused to filming, I forgot that it's in mirror. <laughs> oh, lordy. <laughs> so Stephen King's insomnia. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, so Stephen King's insomnia, it's really funny. I actually flew through this book at the beginning of January because I couldn't sleep. <laughs> And I was actually listening to an audio and I just flew through it. And then all of a sudden I could do nothing but sleep at, uh, and at odd hours. Um, and I kept falling asleep while listening to the same chapter, which I think I heard partially 12 times. So it was quite a difficult one to make through to the end. Um, this book is about Ralph who can't, he's, he's, wife has just died and he can't sleep and he thinks it's as, as a result of his insomnia that he starts to see things such as um, auras and things around people but what it actually turns out to be because it's Stephen King world uh, this man lives in Derry and Derry is the hometown of it <laughs> a whole load of scary events that well not even scary um, universe saving events that, mu that must occur. This book involves uh, a, 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 an act of terrorism or a potential act of terrorism as well. So it is very real life and this actually act of terrorism is terribly, this was written about 1996 or in the mid 90s. I'll look it up and I'll put it down there on the thing that you know where you're right, whatever that is. Um, and it reflects events that actually happened in the future, it's much the same as Stephen King's The Stand would reflect a little bit with, you know, the world comes to the end because of flu. Hopefully the world isn't going to come in the end because of the current pandemic, but there would be a reflection of, a of an event that hadn't occurred yet. Now, I think this is because Stephen King writes so much, even in his novels, but he reads, writes so many no novels that eventually he predicts all the bad shit that's ever going to happen. But you never know, the man might be psychic, and maybe we, we do need to read all these novels to find out what happens next. Um, so there's Ralph, his, his, uh, as a main protagonist. The, the, the main um, villain of the novel is Ed De De Depenu. I'm just looking down to see the name so I don't forget his name. And 
the two of them can see the colors or the auras and they basically Ralph has to save the universe. This universe is very much the Dark Tower universe. If somebody hasn't read Stephen King or the Dark Tower yet, um, and it is it uses an awful lot of um, information that comes from this universe. So his big high fantasy series really, really feeds into this one. And I read this, having not read the Dead Dark Tower the first time. This time I read the Dark Tower. So I actually understood a little bit more that I thought it was less weird. I remember the first time I really thinking this is very weird. Stephen King has lost his shit. What's wrong with him? Um, now I can actually see the references. So I'm not sure how this will read to somebody who hasn't read the Dark Tower series currently. Um, the only other, other thing I put down here is to remember that this book talks about the abortion pro-life debate. It's set in 1996. So it takes it from that era's um, debate topics. But if that is any way likely to be offensive to you in any way, you probably best stay in away from this because it's central to the story. But it wasn't a bad book now to finish for like, you know, it's like 900 and something pages, I think. It's a mammoth, exactly. I should have read it from March of the Mammoth, except I wouldn't have, because that would be obeying the rules. Um, the other book that I actually finished this week, because I finished the book, so I got, to, I got into the habit of refinishing books again, was my Rare, uh, Rare Birds book club um, read. Rare Birds send, they give you a choice of two books and they just give you like, you know, little um, descriptions of them. You're not supposed to guess what they are and you're supposed to pick it on the description. Now, I always cheat, now, always. If I don't know what the book is, I will often do a cheat and a Google and Google and Google until I find out which one of the books are because I'm just terrified it's a book I already own and haven't bloody read yet. <laughs> so I always know, I always want my own surprise. Um, there's a Rare Bird Birds book coming out soon, so I might do a little unboxing for that. I think I chose book A, this thing, but you get to choose your two books, one of the two books. So you never have to worry about getting a book that you already own, which is which is a good thing. And they always send really good. I think it's Rachel and, and um, you're happy reading Rachel. Um, she always picks, selects really, really good books. And then there's a little reading club online and you get a little synopsis card. It's all pretty really wrapped and all the rest of these book subscriptions are. And you get your little um, uh, bookmarks, see, can't speak. And you get your book. Um, which is always a new release in the UK paperback edition. Normally literary fiction, but can also be chick lit and, and genre fiction. Uh, but it's always, always, always written by a woman. Um, so this is The Girl of the Eleven Voice by Abby Dara. Just hold on just for a second. Sorry, I had to cough there and I no longer, I will not film coffee because I just think that it's, it's upsetting for people at the moment. Um, so this, I mean, this has a lot of people who read this book. It's well loved. It's well loved for a reason. Um, it has beautiful, beautiful language. Um, I even remember like things like in chapter 15, there's thing, um, it's spoken in um, our protagonists and I think I put the protagonist's name down my little notice. I've forgotten her name. She's 14, Adun Adunai. Um, I hope I got pronounced that okay. Uh, and I should have pronounced it okay because I did listen to this in audio as well as read it. And she speaks in beautiful, beautiful broken English. Um, and, it, and it's gorgeous and it's poetic. Um, and just even like, I just I just even remember the beginning of cha uh, chapter five. Um, so she talks about death. Death is like a tall Iroko tree with body, no flesh, no eyes, only mouth and teats, plenty teats. The thinner the pencil and the sharper the blade for biting and killing. Death is not having legs, but it has two rings, two wings of nails and arrows. Death can fly and kill the bird in the air dead, strike through the sky and fall them to the ground, scatter their brain. It can be swimming too, swallow the fishes inside the river. So I know some people have difficulty with reading this because Oh, this Rare Bird Birds does a, a book club with it, and obviously I'm on Goodreads as well. I know some people have problems reading this book because of the language. Um, would recommend trying out the audiobook in that case. 
um, because you get to hear it with the Nigerian accent read better and without and I'll put the narrator's name and the narrator actually sings in it which is something I absolutely adore because because um, <laughs> our main protagonist who I've forgotten the name of again keeps singing in the book I'm sorry uh, Aduni <laughs> and Aduni and, and is such a nice name in the book that one of the other characters wants to name her first kid it so I mean because Aduni is absolutely the most adorable character you'll ever meet in 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 fiction um she just keeps going no matter how bad it gets um very much like characters like um that's why i took these books out um the character the main protagonist in elmet and the main protagonist in the clay girl where the children they seem to know more than children should do um <laughs> well actually Duny is so innocent and sweet at some stages um because she doesn't understand all the English perfectly and she makes some really funny mistakes um and they speak this beautiful language and you think it's, it's almost more than a child should, should a child shouldn't be able to think these things in Duny's case she shouldn't be able to think um her liberal feminist ideals which she does um, because she comes from this Nigerian village um, and unlike books like Americana and um, Stay With Me which are written from the more middle-class Nigerian perspective this is written from a girl who's from from the rural villages who's had a few years of primary school whose mother has struggled to put her through a few years of primary school but is forced to marry when she's 14 um, because that is what is done and nobody sees the point of a girl learning English um, so I just look at the time said how is that only three minutes but it isn't only three minutes I stopped <laughs> and <laughs> so she has this appalling um, uh, life to be honest she's very positive she still thinks that she will go to school and that she will become a teacher and then she will teach the kids in the villages like her um no matter how hard things get and they get hard they're particularly hard it's actually this book is almost like it's written in two stages or there's two parts of the book like there's the book one and book two there's a book one where she's actually in the villages and then book two she goes to lagos and she's actually working for the type of characters that would have appeared in the more that there were other books that I had read from a year being Americana and stay with me um and yeah and then she has a completely different set of problems there and a completely but a new way of overcoming and actually making it to the possibility of going to school the book depends completely on circumstances like Charles Dickens and all good good um literature does i loved it it's full of flaws and i loved 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 it okay so those are the two books that i read this week um i'm hoping to get through so I, what i've been having is i have been starting books so i've started books last december and there's probably about eight of them which i haven't read yet as in i haven't finished but i've read quite a bit of so this week my plan is okay to first to week two of zombies run or zombies 5k run um which is a 5k app which the zombies chase you and it's a story i'll probably put it there or something um so that's you know the other thing is to finish at least two of the books i've started so i'm only going to show three because it'd go on forever so the first one i started yesterday <laughs> And this book is a Salt Publications book, and they got it because it's Salt. Um, it's, it's Salt. It's a Salt. This Salt. They're an independent publishers in the UK. Um, obviously, UK is hard to to get at the moment in Ireland because of the Brexit. Why is this? Oh yeah, because they started again. I was saying, why are you two minutes again? Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, because it's they're harder to get at the home, <laughs> but and they're harder to get because uh, you know because it has to come through by post, 
and because we can't physically go to the shops at the moment to buy them so that the shop has managed to bring them over from the UK right, so they take a long time if you if you were to order them I don't know why I bother to talk about that that's just my circumstances but this is a salt publication book um which I, I just walked past yesterday and went actually I kind of like the look of that it's about a, a girl whose boyfriend turns up after seven years he disappeared seven years ago when they were both 16 and he turns up and he's still wearing his school uniform he looks exactly like he did when he was 17, 17 sorry 16 um so so far so good the language is written in a very current i'm 23 vernacular or i mean yeah i'm an older teenager early 20s vernacular um from england love and um though actually this is set a lot in wales and so far so good we'll see how we get on the other one because it is um ladies fiction month or it's ladies for horror month ladies are horror month so it would be ladies of horror month in February we're supposed to read horror, February, uh, horror books so here's the book I started last Halloween it's short stories so I've only read every now and again I read the short stories it's Earthbound and other supernatural tales by Dorothy McArdle Dorothy McArdle would be a famous enough for Ireland um, ghost writer um, she's more she's more famous for the uninvited which was made into a black and white movie in the 1940s um but this was a period this was her first real foray into fiction it was set set in the 1920s she wrote it in Kamenum and Mountjoy jails she was actually uh on the side of the free state during the civil war in Ireland this is still war in, I mean the civil war in 1927 I'm not talking about Northern Ireland when I say this just that's that's a completely different war connected in some ways but completely different um this that's this 1920 civil war was when one part of the Irish signed a treaty with the British government to give them some freedoms from Britain and the rest of Ireland um decided that that wasn't enough they were it had been long enough and they wanted full a full republic and so she was on the republic side so she'd been she was jailed by the free staters um during this period so a lot most of her stories are about freedom and republicanism and but she uses a ghost story to tell her politics in a way I mean, maybe she's just working it through. She's in jail at the time. She wrote this while well in jail. So, you know, and she gives them and she, and they're all to somebody Schmidt in jail. Like, you know, who you mean each story, it starts off with this one is for LS. So LS would have been somebody Schmidt met in jail. And that one's called The Return of Nayev. So they're very, they're very political. Um, they were case um, ghost stories. She was only beginning learning her craft. Um, but, I suppose that they're important in that they give the politics of a woman at the time which isn't very often done so i'm reading these slowly i'll try to finish them this week just so we get them done the other one i'm reading in the car is um the mermaid and mrs hancock now this is a good excuse for being slow because i can't go in the car because you're not supposed to go past five kilometers less than going to work and can not, I only go to work when absolutely necessary. So it's only about once a week. So that's why it's taken so long to get through. But we're about halfway through. So the word made Mrs. Hancock, which needs to no talk about because most people know it. So that's my week um, or my plans for next week. I hope that you're all doing reasonably well. Um, please do comment down below if you want to. And until next time, enjoy whatever you're reading.